All right. Well, I just want to welcome Saf uh, from Tiger King on. First of all, I'm very nervous talking to you because I've been watching this uh, like everyone else on the planet. <laughs> I'll say right off the top, watching everybody be interviewed, there's a real cast of characters and uh, you might be the most level-headed of all of them. Especially you've gone through some actual big drama and you seem pretty cool during those interviews. Yeah. Well, you had something happen to your arm and let's just catch everybody up. Can you walk us through it? Because they kind of skimmed it on the show. 2013, October, I was just, it was just a typical Saturday for us on park. Um, so it was, it was about 10 a.m. in the morning, about an hour and a half away from tour time, get chores done. And I just got complacent. You know, you work with these animals every day. You do anything every day. You think you got it down to a science. And sure. That's, that's honestly what happened. There's two different types of pens that we work with with the cats. One is their main enclosure, one is their catch pen. And um, the fence that I stuck my hand into was the catch pen from the main pen. And, you know, like I said, it was complacency. I do that step every single day. And, you know, today was a different day. <laughs> yeah. So is it you're distracted, your arm is – because I see they put meat on a stick which and put it through. That's how I feed my uh, turtle. Honestly, yeah. it's, it's a golden rule around there, you know? It doesn't matter if you raise them up in the living room. That cage is, is you should be aware of it because they're aware of it. They know that there's a pen in between you and them no matter what. So, okay. like I said, not only was it complacency, but it was an absolute 100% mistake, you know? Yeah. And what <laughs> happens with the tiger, they realize it's not really the tiger's fault in a weird way. Did they do anything with the tiger or they just let it go back into the... Uh, cage and lay low um you know after efforts the obviously the immediate reaction is it's now it's dangerous and you know what happens to dangerous animals um but again after effort you know it's not the tiger's fault on my end it's not the tiger's fault from the the zoo itself um, sure rules and protocols you you don't have to put it down you know it was just in the media's eye um so it wasn't put down we just moved it off of the park off of display um and now it's just being a tiger outside of the public eye. Just got a job driving Uber. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, now, did that part get filmed, or were you not filming that much at that time? Because pretty much everything else seems filmed. No, um, everything was filmed. So the part that you think that is somewhere, but you've never seen it. I mean, I've seen it immediately after. Like I said, within a week, I was back on park. And my biggest uh, concern at that point was kind of damage control, you know? Yeah, um, you, you know what? You were a great employee because you went back. It sounded like four or five days later. It was five days after my amputation, and it was wow. seven days after the incident happened. So. And the amputation, I thought another tough thing was they said uh, it could take two years. You might be able to rehab your hand. You just said, let's just go. Right. Let's cut it off. Right. Yeah, it, that was al almost exactly the conversation. You know, he came in, he explained what they had done wow. in post-op. Exactly when I went into the hospital, they did whatever damage to control they had to do then. Um, and he said, you know, after looking at it and whatnot, your hand, you, there's still function in it, but it would be two years of reconstructive surgery to even begin therapy and that, you know. And I heard yeah. two years of anything, and I was like, no. Sure, <laughs> What's I get happen? it. Listen, we're both tough. I get it. Yeah, yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, one th thing I thought was odd, maybe I'm wrong, was Joe running around with a paramedics coat on during that? Uh, Did you see that part? You're not wrong. No, you're not wrong. He uh, he owns one. He maybe <laughs> owns you. Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, no, actually, Joe told me, so this is just what conversations between us, that he used to be a paramedic, and that was just his old his old jacket. You know, but what an odd time to throw it on. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure I made it clear um, in the documentary as well. But he is all about showmanship, man. That's. I mean, it looked like I'm helping, or I, I don't know what it looked like, but it was definitely for a reason. You're right. Yes, it's, sir. That's not an accident. How did it feel to realize Oklahoma is more dangerous than the Middle East? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I didn't know that anything like that I've, I've always been pretty reckless my whole life so i didn't think about it very much um and it all just seemed par for the course for me but yeah well, you work on tigers you work on lions and then people say it's dangerous job right. and that's just something people say 
but right. it is dangerous and you turn your back for one it second is. obviously uh, are you still there are they were built when i stopped it was they were building one near windstar casino right. which i've played twice um <laughs> i know exactly where it is and yeah is that where you are now working or where do you already now no sir actually in uh, june of 2018 is when i removed myself from the park okay um, and that was basically right around the time that Joe left. Um, the reason that I was there went away, so I left. Right. Was uh, It sounded like a good time to scatter. Uh, he was running for president. He didn't win, right? I didn't see the end yet. I haven't seen the last one. You know, I don't think he won, no. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and at the very end, if the Tigers wind up dealing meth, I'm going to freak out. I'm so close yeah. to the end. Um, yeah. Okay, so back to Joe, we haven't talked about enough, who's hilariously riveting to watch. Uh, there's got to be yeah. a charm or an appeal because everyone seems to stick. You know, they all, like you, they stay with him. Uh, so I'm not putting words in your mouth, but he's a good-hearted guy. There's something about him, right, that people like. Yes. You know, uh, no, Joe, Joe has a heart for sure, 100%. I've I seen it with the animals and whatnot, um, which is why I got on board in the first place. We both had this passion and charisma for animals in general. Um, but you learn very quickly that he is very fast to tell you what he knows you want. Yeah. So he's a man of many masks. He can be anything. You know, they did a, a good job with it as a viewer because every episode just so much more you so peel the onion more. like you go whoa <laughs> and then you're like you're yeah. only on the third one wait to the fourth one and so i kept uh here and, you know the person is like carol bask carol ba carol bask and uh mm -hmm. it was funny carol basket she is uh another one and then they say she has her own parks so you're like why is she so great if she has her own and she's throwing stones and it gets right, so right. complicated and i'm sure being in the middle of that must have been so tough because you also know poking uh, Carol Bass like that is not a great idea. And I'm sure right. people like you were saying, tone it down. Right. On a, on a daily basis. I mean, my day started with, let's just get through this day. Every day. It's hard enough. <laughs> so, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's a enough. lot of work just, uh, just following the rules that are already in place. It's not easy. That's one thing the documentary didn't really point out is that it's not easy to own a big cat in general. Kind of well, I'm sure just one. Yeah. How about so many? And then the, the amount of food and the amount of the, the beef and the truck right. and the guys drinking it. And you're like, it's all and it's on pizza. <laughs> it's all. I know. I it's know. all. W w was it like sloppy Joe day a lot around there? I'm sure. Mess. It's a mess. And and I think that's the biggest thing to remember, you know, is that. The industry is gonna gonna be there no matter what, you know. The characters are gonna change or whatnot, but the industry is gonna be there no matter what. And that was Every my big character thing. that came in was even more different than the other and more interesting, I, just because I know, of, I know. they all had a, a a common sort of Craigslist feel to them. But one hundred percent. But like that guy Alan that came in. I mean, they're like, you want to run the zoo? What did you do last? Oh, I ran a Pizza Hut. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> Like, yeah. no qualifications Ew. at all. Comes Ew. in and goes, I'm sort of a part-time hitman. It's like, ah, sure. Well, I'm sure you can right. figure out the system. There's uh, got to be some kind of dedication there. I know. And that was it. You know, it was, and I, I told them the same thing when they asked, where do these people come from? It's it's people, for the most part, that have nowhere else to go. Because it's true, you and it gets to take no advantage of it in a way. You, some of them must feel good about it, but like... Uh, you know, there's so many hot guys there that you think are straight, sort of like a grown-ups movie. Um, but like that Travis kid, it was that that's like a <laughs> that's like a studly kid. I maybe from California, like could have been a model. One hundred percent from California. Great looking yeah. dude. And he's like, I'm not gay, but 14 seconds after meeting Joe, we're making out. I'm like, dude, this yeah. guy, I'm watching the TV and I'm starting to go, hmm. Because he really gets <laughs> And the other guy, maybe John, John. who had a, a couple of teeth. I don't want to say a couple of teeth missing. I'll it's say positive. Funny. He had a couple of teeth. And I think he got a new grill. He's like Travis Scott now. And uh, he's fun to watch, too. But they all are so drawn 
And then the uh, unfortunate thing that happened to Travis, uh, is it now were you close to different people in the, in, in the documentary or just some you knew just working there, but some you were tighter with? Who were you closer with? Uh, definitely closer to the ones that I worked with the longest. Day day. So uh, John Rinky was the, the park manager, and we worked on a daily basis together. Was well, he that guy person. with the long hair and the Oakleys and sort of a no. burnout? Oh, no, that was Eric. Okay. He, uh, I worked with him as well. Um, so, you know, I was closer to the people that I had to deal with on a daily basis. Um, so Rinky, John, Joe, I was very close to Travis, yes. And Travis seemed like a, a, that that really shocked me. That when I saw a, that, yeah. I mean, I can't even joke about that. Uh, the informant, that guy, I look like a Chucky doll with a flat iron. What was his name? <laughs> he, he's that the was guy. Him. He's the guy that sort of uh, was singing like a canary at the end, and he yes. said it was because he had like a mongoose without a permit. But everyone's like, it was a little more than the mongoose. Uh, right. So <laughs> I'm sure they had him on some stuff. It's an but that's when everything started to fall apart, right? Yes, yes, sir. It's yeah, good you know, I, and that's it's so funny because those characters that that they are, right? Yeah. They have nothing to do with the actual care. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like none of their issues had anything to do with the care. So yeah. that's that's kind of the saddest part. Saddest part is someone like you, and a lot of those people get in it because they love animals, and then the animal. Is are just turned into a backdrop to the documentary because these people are such forceful personalities that it's all up here and this is the zoo, but these uh, going at each other and what's going on in the FBI and then Carol and then the other guy Doc Antel uh, is that the other yeah. guy? Yes. Um, he's riveting in his own way. I mean, it's just mesmerizing to watch, and you just go. The more they talk, you go. Like, I have the most boring friends. Just made me think I need new friends. Yeah, I don't need those guys exactly, but I just need, yeah. <laughs> I, I need to amp it up a little bit. They're accepting okay. applications, though. Now, who, uh, Carol Baskin, the husband, <laughs> what is the general feeling around that? Yeah, I think, um, for me, I was introduced to it as she killed him and fed him out to the tigers. That's how I was introduced to Carol. You know? I mean, that sounds pretty believable. That's right. how I'm right. going to introduce Carol yeah, to people. She's, she's you know Carol. Terrifying. She doesn't wear have any conditioner in her hair, and she killed her husband. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> yeah, you know Carol. I'm like, I'm like Carol. Let's throw that hair in a scrunchie. Let's mix it up. Let's get some uh, Pert Plus going. Uh, but she is very sort of diabolical in her own way because if you watch the interviews, after a while you realize when she gets nervous, she laughs. She goes, Hi. "Oh, I wish." I would put him in a meat grinder, and you're like, <laughs> and you're like, who said meat grind? Like, I mean, it is, no, it, it does seem very possible. Like, they're like, where could I hide him on this ten thousand acre and, ranch? Like I said, that's got, she's got everything she needs. It's the perfect scenario, in my it's opinion. So perfect, but. and you throw it in with any line. I don't care, good one, bad one. They're gonna, oh hey, free dinner and. Uh -huh. Do it in the dark one day, and who's going to go looking at every bone on it? You know, whatever. I'm sure they looked exactly close. It. That's exactly it, was, it. And, you know, I've met all these people in person, and they come off on camera exactly exactly the same way. I mean, that's just them. So you're not seeing, like, a, a show. This is them. <laughs> this is them in real yeah. life. Yeah. It seemed like everyone's very real, and that's why very much so. it's even more interesting. Because uh, I'm, like, what's known as a showbiz phony. Um, but... Uh, I uh, yeah. No, I think that if it, it struck me as if someone's saying they're going to kill someone over and over, it's uh, they. It seems like to me they wouldn't because you're saying it on camera every day. It's like yeah. my friends that say they're going to join the gym every day. They don't, but it, it seems it would be. Uh, even Joe would know that's too obvious. But that Alan guy who fucking scares me, believe me, he's like. They said, cut the head off. I said, no problem. I'm like, really? No problem? Not, is there a bump in pay? Is there? But he was talking about Carol. I was like, Jesus, he got three grand. I'm even shipping in. I'm starting to not like Carol. I'll do it. You should have just done a GoFundMe. I wish there was one last episode where Joe Wynn is undercover boss, but I guess we'll never see that.
<laughs> that would have been funny. <laughs> I don't think you'd ever get away with it. <laughs> I don't think you can sneak in with those turquoise shirts. Can't, Speaking can't of which, that. you can't hide <laughs> that guy. Uh, the uh, online is going crazy about if there's a movie, who would play Joe Exotic? Who do you see? Do you see Matthew McConaughey? No. Jack? No, who do you like? only one person to see. Come on, David. Come Who's on, that? Spade. That would be uh, you. Oh, Spade Man? <laughs> on, I, Spade. Uh, I, I'm, you know what? I'm going to look like uh, Joe Exotic two more weeks in quarantine, I think. <laughs> it's all ahead of time. <laughs> hey, you have, to rock, you have to rock the shirts with the open and the tattoos. Dude, I'm ripped. Don't worry about that. Um, what about, uh, okay, last question. What about you? Who do you want to play you? Anybody out there? Any big stars? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've ever looked at anyone and said, I look like you. <laughs> well, uh, when, I was, when I was younger, uh, everyone thought I was the kid from the Disney movie, Johnny Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami? I don't even know that one. So, yeah, I, I really couldn't tell you. Well, I'm sure they'll find someone good. Everyone loves this thing. All of my uh, stupid celebrity friends just talk about it all day on text. So uh, they're going to be so stoked that I got to talk to uh, Saf. So thank you for your time. And uh, I really appreciate it. All right. Take care.